Well, as I mentioned, I think this is going to be such a close competition this afternoon, but one rider I really had to have a word with in the 1,000cc sidecars, Mark Cossa, you missed out last year, but, um, you know, this is one that you've won three times. You could do it again, couldn't you? No, we won it last year. Oh, well, I got that wrong. Yeah, Wimborne. <laughs> um, it was tough last year because we took the tapes and dropped a ride, so we had to win every other ride. Um, but this year, hopefully we won't make mistakes like that, and um, it won't be easy by any stretch, but we'll aim to win. Well, I'm sure you would aim to win, and it'd be great to see you get three in a row. But I'm just thinking competition-wise, where do you see the biggest challenge? Anyone that gets in front of me. I need to make starts. If I make starts, they struggle to pass me. So if we get out the start first, that's the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, so much depends on those early heats. But I'm kind of looking at this entry and thinking that could be Gareth, could be you, could even be Rob Wilson, people like that on this track. It's so open, isn't it? Well, Rob's really quick this year. Gaz has his moments. Uh, there's a few riders which could do it. Absolutely. And Carl, looking forward to it? Uh, yeah, I will be soon. <laughs> After practice, I'm sure I feel a bit better. But you've ridden this track many times, so you know your way around, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I like this track. It's uh, fast, it's good, a few lines. It'll be a good, good, good day's racing. Yeah, I think it will be, and I'm going to leave it there. Have a good day. Look forward to speaking to you later. Nice one. Cheers. Well, as I keep saying, it's a very, very open competition, but one rider I really ought to have a word with. Rob Wilson, you've had a lot of success on this track, haven't you? Yeah, for us, it's been uh, extremely good. It's nice and local, and obviously, it's a good racetrack. Well, and see, really, I think what I've been saying this morning is that I look at this programme, and you just couldn't pick a winner, could you? It's really going to be on the day. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, the difficult part of, with our sport, really. I mean, it is all about today. Uh, one meeting and um, yeah, it can work and sometimes it works against you like. Well it certainly does but I've seen you have success on this track, nice track to ride, how's things like the wrist holding up? Yeah that's all good now to be fair, I mean I, I struggle when I come back but that's probably just a bit of old age and uh, when you sort of listen to the speedway riders they come back within four or five weeks but I just couldn't do it but to be fair there's not a problem now, it's good. Absolutely, that's good to hear Rob. Have a fantastic day today. We look forward to it. Yeah, thanks, lads. Cheers. Well, talking to a few of the other riders, obviously we know this is a fantastic track, but, Rod, three years ago, was it, you won it here? Yeah, it'd be three or four years ago now, yeah. Yeah, three years, I think, yeah, it was. So you've ridden the track plenty of times. You know it well. It'd be nice to get it back again, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. Yeah, but uh, there's a big difference between there and now. So, I don't know. We'll see how we go. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling all right. I feel all right myself. Bike's all right. Uh, so we're going Absolutely. Well, I mean, obviously, you've put a few ticks in the box that the bike's OK. You're feeling OK. Competition's tough, though, isn't it? Very tough. Too tough, I think, yeah. Yeah, Mark's going well. Rob Wilson's going well. Gareth's going well. Paul's going well. They're all going well. <laughs> yeah, the list is endless, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, well, like Rod... Very best of luck, mate. Thanks. I know it's going to be some fantastic racing and a hard day for you. Yeah, it is. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You want to swap? <laughs> no, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Well, as I've mentioned so many times this morning, the competition is going to be very, very tough. But Paul Whitelam, this track is good. We know that. The competition is incredibly strong. Oh, for sure. It's going to be a very open meeting. I don't know. There's top eight. That could do it. Anyone could do it. Yeah, the track's fantastic, it's always is here, so we hope for a good day. And you've had some good rides here over the years, haven't you? Yeah, we've had a few wins here, we've had a lot of good rides here, so fingers crossed it all goes good. Well, absolutely. It's going to be short, sharp, those early heats obviously make a lot of difference, but just to quickly bring you in, looking forward to a good day? Yeah, I can't wait, it's my first one. I think probably be uh, a lot of close racing, and uh, yeah, just look, really looking forward to it, really. Absolutely, what a meeting to come in. Have you done any at all? Yeah, we done. We done. Uh, obviously, the qualifier that was a big one, the poacher. But been waiting all year for this one, so yeah, I can't wait to get out of there. Oh, absolutely superb! Best of luck, guys. I know, as I think I agree with you, it's going to be a tough one today. Oh, for sure, it's definitely going to be hard. Cheers. Okay. Well, Gareth, I know you're you're pretty busy. I don't want to interrupt, but obviously some last minute changes going on. Looking forward to today. Yeah, yeah, track looks good. Uh, yeah, looking forward to having a good day. Just going to tr try some new bits, that's all. Not really happy with what I've got at minute, so just going to try try some new bits and see what happens. Oh, absolutely, but um, you're having a good season. I mean, I think you, without 
anyone saying really I mean you are capable of winning this Masters this year yeah but it's the same as anyone in it it's everyone's all same in the same boat if you get out of that gate first you've got a good chance of winning haven't you well absolutely right but I think it's a real open book this year and I think you're in with as much chance as anybody uh, I hope so if I can get rid of my gremlins off the start line I should, should be alright <laughs> yeah that counts a long way very best of luck Gareth I'll leave you to it you obviously look very busy thank you very much well I know I keep saying it's a very very open competition today but Richard it's a tough one this year isn't it yeah, it is very tough obviously there's a lot of a lot of quick guys going at the moment and there's a lot of quick guys going through from England as well. Well, yeah, and you've had a busy weekend. I understand that you were in Vector last night. Yeah, four, well, four of the boys were in Vector last night for an open meeting and we, we arrived back here at six o'clock this morning, so it's been very hectic and not much sleep, but that's the speed of it. Well, that's the way it goes, ain't it? And I think it goes without saying, you've ridden this track many times before, you know your way around it, certainly in with a chance for the Masters this year. Yeah, obviously I've got to be one of the most fun people at the moment and if I can win it it would be very nice too but well it certainly would but you've got a big day's racing ahead of you so I'll leave you to it but best of luck Richard thank you thanks well whilst I've been talking to a lot of the riders that we know who have been in this competition many times hearing about riders coming back from Vectra. A lot of the young riders today are certainly in with a chance, and Georgie, you must be one of those that the crowd are tipping to actually do something today. Yeah, well, that's it. I, I usually aim high for a win or a top three finish anyway, but today, obviously, being my first, my first Masters appearance, I'd like to sort of, I would like to get in the top six, really. I know it's aiming quite high, but going on my performance during the year, obviously, it's my first year sort of coming back after breaking my leg, sort of, been on a really big confidence builder this year and sort of this will top it off getting in the top six but yeah this year we we focus on my gating more than anything Excellent. and last week at the under 21 sort of my gating was the best I've ever gated so hopefully I can carry it through to this week. Oh, so plenty of good news and you've ridden this track before haven't you? Yeah I've ridden it various amount of times always got on really well with it but never had so I've always been there or thereabouts so I've never <laughs> actually got to the top yet but but it's a tough competition though in the lineup today. Yeah, it is a hard field, obviously. Yeah, we've got the best in England here, so hopefully I can dig deep and pull a win out. Well, well done. Very best of luck, Georgie. All, right. All the best. Thank Thanks, you. Dale. Well, Mark, you must be looking forward to today. A big competition, but plenty of competition to try and get a win. Uh, yeah, some uh, big names here today. Um, you know, you've got David, Richard, who's obviously on fire, Glenn, Andrew. Um, and then you've got uh, a few of the other boys who will be racing week in, week out, and it should be a good meeting. Well, I think it's going to be a good meeting. The racing's going to be tough, but you must be in with as much chance as the rest of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, you've got to be in it to win it, as they say. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we'll just come here and see, uh, see how it goes. Um, got my own little expectations, so uh, I'm going to keep to myself. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we see uh, see how it ends up at the end of the day. Absolutely. Very best of luck, Mark. Thanks for speaking to us. Thank you. Cheers. Well, throughout all the interviews this morning, I've been talking about how strong the competition is, but James Shanes, I've got to ask you straight away, this is a big event for you, isn't it? Yeah, this is my biggest event of the year so far, and the nerves are just about to kick in now, but it's part of racing, and hopefully, hopefully I'll have a good day today. But if I don't, I don't, but I want to make the final today. That's my goal, and then that's my goal for the year, then I'm, I'm sorted. Oh, well done, because, you know, what I've been saying is that obviously where you come through the junior racing and everything, you're coming into this adult scene as a, as a really trained professional. So, you know, a lot of the spectators are thinking that maybe this is a chance this year to see one of the youngsters actually do it. I wouldn't exactly say professional, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's been, it's quite hard because like David Howe and stuff, I've, I've idolised them racing and, and now I'm going out to start line with them and it's quite a scary thought that I'm, I'm racing against people that I, I look up to as role models, so, but I can't really complain, I'm here, I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to enjoy my day, I've got the whole family with me today, so have some fun and see what happens at the end of it. Absolutely, fantastic, well look forward to a great day's racing and uh, good luck. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. Well, I'll tell you about that after five. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, just take a few cyclists to come around and we can just see you all through the air. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel.
See if you can smile, you know Adam. <laughs> Adam Filmer! But now he's back on form. Please welcome number 21, David Howe. Now, lining up. Next to David Howe, I don't think he would have dreamed of this in a million years, but ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big cheer for 189, Rob Snow. Moving on, our next one is a British Sand Racing Champion several times now. Danny Warwick, number 52. Good luck. Next we have an Australian racing here in the UK, Rodney McDonald. And uh, next in, former British Under 21 champion, King of the Southwest, King of the, yes, former, King of the Southwest, of course, and Paul 
and we have Josh Dingle, number 107. Good luck, Josh. Keep your applause going. Another one of the local boys down here. Georgie Wood, number 96. Good luck, Georgie. Now, what about this next young man? He's certainly done the business on the grass this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Shanes, number 93. Hey, you've got some cheers here. Georgie. And, well, a rider who's tasted glory in the Masters. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Affleton. Next to Andrew, a rider who's uh, doing very well indeed in the World Long Track Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, a big welcome here to Richard Hall. Next, we move along and a uh, young man from the Midlands there, number six, and that is Rob Finlow. From the north, from the north now, we've got a, a gentleman from the north, David Spate, number 82. Now, we move along here, and of course, this next gentleman, I think rode in, he was telling me earlier, rode in the second ever British Masters back in 1983. He's back on the grass and doing really well, Rob Fortune. Now, one rider who followed in his uh, father's wheel tracks and eclipsed his father because he's rode in a two or three British Masters now, and that's number 53, Jody Hodson. And next we go to number three, another local boy down here, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Baseby. Aaron Pease, number 36. Then another one of the local heroes there, number nine, Mitch Goddard. And another rider who takes the glory here in the British Masters, and that of course is Glenn Phillips. And uh, last but not least, number four. Proving wrong, come come love, whatever you do. <laughs> <that. laughs> He's over from Australia. And later on <laughs> in the break, <laughs> you've got some hot news on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You listen out what's going to happen here in the UK next year. Paul and Helen. Paul, good luck. And uh, I thought it was going to be around. You've got your lager crate. You've got your sponge on the top to make sure that you can actually sit on it. You've got that, Bob. Bob's video is going to film that. There's your wine. And uh, well, we'll see you on the racetrack. And of course, we've got here, yes, we can't speak to all of you, Graham Hancock. Um, he, Graham did fantastic in the BBC Grandstand Grass Track back in 1966. I was watching it. Oh, was you? What did you do in the army? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you've, got, you've got to present some of these, so take two with you. Well, if you just follow these other group, I'm going to do it. Bob! There'll be some over. <laughs> no, they don't get wine, these ones. It starts from there. They don't get one. They're over. They're over. They're over. They're They're trying to weld it up. Oh, what? Right, you do this one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 Multi-talented, he's won the Masters a few times, and that is number 37, Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe. Also tasting victory in the Masters in the past, of course, we have uh, number 92 next up, and that's uh, Paul Whiteland with Kieran Ivey in the chair. Are you related to Bill Ivey? Great uncle. Great uncle, Bill Ivey. Have you ever heard of Bill Ivey? Or you older fans would have heard of Bill Ivey. Great road racer. Right, to the south west, number 57. We have Clive Stoneman and a famous sidecar passenger, Roland Broomfield. And, uh, 
Peter, Peter Lloyd, former solo rider, now sidecar man, of course, passed by Gaz Williams. Then, next to him we have uh, Will Offen, number 18. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Will Offen, very quiet. I'm not sure what the microphone is. Uh, Will Offen and Fraser Sutherland. How could I forget Fraser? There we are. Uh, next to the oh, course, uh, Rob Wilson, number 24, with Terry Saunders in the chair. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank there's your bottles of wine. Moving on then, number 22 is the next in the lineup. And of course, equally uh, top on the bottom, the left hand corner as well. That's Will Penfold and Ricky Pay. So, now we come to local outfit. And Carl Bell. Yeah, Dan Crawford. I ain't done much more. I'll get rid of these last few and uh, I'll go back there. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the line of Under 21 champion rides that little 250 but rides it brilliantly. And uh, we know that this is a name that you've got to remember for the future. And, uh, uh, good to see him out in there in action, and uh, obviously, in the they're discussing his history here while I'm uh, watching him out on the track. And we know that he was the world under 21. Rod Snow, Martin Sturgeon, Mark Baisley and Rodney McDonald. 
I think we probably said it enough times already this afternoon that it really is an open field if you look at the lineup for that very first heat. And I should remind uh, all of you and perhaps those of you that might be here for the first time that what their the race the racing format they go through this afternoon is they score points for their finishing position through every heat. They also score points if they've qualified for the semi-final and final at the end of the day. The interesting scenario that could happen is that you might get somebody finishing second or third in the final and they've got the most total points. Now, I've got people next to me that we're keeping track of all the points in. Don't worry about it yourself. We're keeping up to date with who's doing what. But what it's all about is making them race at every single point they can during the racing program. Line up for race one, they've got underway and they go down that back straight for the first time. Now there is one additional uh, award this afternoon, it's for the rider that hits that hole shot for the very first time. And uh, most times today, the that might be well this afternoon, he leads going up the back straight, started to open up the gaps already. They really do sort themselves out in this second lap. And David now is getting quite a pace. Game change in the second spot. Richard Howe is in third at the moment. Game change starts to close now as we drop that back straight. Well, he's got a very quick rider in front of him, but he's certainly closing that gap and equally opening up the gap between second and third. Richard Hall got a lot to do to try and get on turns with those front two runners.
race two and a very good convincing win for rider number 22, Andrew Appleton. In second place to him, number nine, Mitch Gordon. In third place, number 82, David Spate. In fourth place, number 130, Ben Millichip. In fifth place, number seven, Harlan Cook. In sixth place, number 12, Daniel Winterton. Seventh place, number 122. And that must be the reserve that's come in, Richard Andrews. So the reserve has come in in place of number two, Tim Nodes. The eighth place finisher there was number 53, and the winning time was 115.74. 115.74, and your winning time. So for those of you keeping programs 100%, we have now heard that Tim Nodes unfortunately blew an engine in practice. So his place taken by number 122, Richard Andrews. get underway with race three already into that first turn as they come around sorting themselves out you can see the level of competition we've got this afternoon yeah. 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 a little bit from the rest of the field but Danny Warwick head down goes off the back straight looking very very quick and disappointment for number 42 Glenn Phillips Finally rode last night in Vector in Germany and uh, travelled overnight. Can he close that gap? They go very quickly up that back straight. Now Paul Cooper certainly looks quicker in the corners. Maybe Danny Warwick is taking it a little bit careful, but gap certainly has closed up. Not out of it either. Those front three really getting closer and closer as the race develops. Danny Warwick still with the lead. Paul Cooper getting closer and closer to him as he comes into that last turn. Georgie Wood is not out of it either as they come to board to check a flag. And Paul Cooper got it. Very close on the line. Oh, that was a brilliant last turn for Paul Cooper. And I wonder looking across at the last of whether he could make it. And I'll confirm that for you in the official results. Well, it was very, very close on the line, and I've got official confirmation it was no more than a tyre whip, but a win in race three for number 11, Paul Cooper. In second place, number 52, Danny Warwick. In third place, number 96, Georgie Wood. In fourth place, number six, Rob Finlow. And fifth place, number 107, Josh Dingle. Sixth place, number 51. Seventh place, number 19. And the winning time was 118.04, 118.04. So a very eventful start to the afternoon. The first leg rides now under their belt. Will they change gearing? Will they change tyres? A lot of frantic work I'm sure will be going on before we see them out again. But we've had wins for David Howell, Andrew Appleton and Paul Cooper. turn our attention to the sidecar competition and now in race four very first leg for the sidecars we see five stone and a row of Broomfield. remember we've got a replacement for rob bradley and that is number 16 simon hill uh, rob winterburn goes for the first time peter lloyd robbie wilson and tristan winterburn this Good to see you here. Yeah. So we get underway with the first of the Masters Sidecar for 2014. And off that start and into the first corner. You see where it is. Number 48, Rob Winterburn, that's got the best of it. And he leads as he goes around that first turn.
Uh, Robbie Wilson it is, is starting that second place, but Rob Winterburn is very determined move by the look of him. He's got away from the rest of the field. at the moment because those of you that follow this more closely may be uh, thinking back to that European final they had up at High Easter. Liam was passengering uh, This is a really good start to the afternoon for fans of uh, Rob Winderburn. As he sees the checkered flag coming round this time, and he's got a big, big gap back to that second place, which is Robbie Wilson and Bradley here. Lloyd holding that third place at the moment, but the gaps really have opened up. And I think at the moment it's all going to be about what sort of speed Rob Winderburn has put up. So, race four in your program, we start the sidecar competition with a very impressive win for outfit number 48, Rob Winneburn and Liam Brown. In second place, number 42, Robbie Wilson and Bradley Steer. In third place, number four, Peter Lloyd and Gaz Williams. In fourth place, number 47, Tristan Winterburn and Henry Purcell. Fifth place goes to number 16, and sixth place, number 57. The winning time, 134.35, 134.35, 48.48, going down that back straight it is Paul Whiteland that's setting a very very good pace comes round off the pit then for the first time looking up to Paul Johnson in fourth at the moment trying to put pressure on that third place which is held by John Hiscock so we could potentially have two races on our hands can Colin Blackburn catch the flying Paul Whiteland at the front and Paul Johnson catches John Hiscock. <laughs> Certainly my eyes have turned to that battle for third place at the moment because Paul Johnson looks to be getting quicker and quicker as the race goes on. But shouldn't take my attention off the early leader, Paul Whitelam, who had a terrific start. He did say to us when we interviewed him this morning that... Uh, partnered for the first time this afternoon by Jason Berry as we look across that far side Paul Whitelam and Kieran Ivey come off that bottom bend they know they're going to get a win first time out this afternoon then a very impressive win from start to finish for outfit number 20 <laughs> 20 number 92 paul whitelam and kieran ivy in second place number 25 colin blackbourne and martin smith in third place number seven paul johnson and jason barry in fourth place number 184 john hiscock and carl bell fifth place number 98 and sixth place number 80 
The winning time is 137.06, 137.06. You should have had 92, 25, 7, 184, 98, and 80, 137.06. Down the back straight he goes. Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe. They won it at Brixton in 2012. They won it at Brixton in 2013. And I shouldn't forget, of course, that they, uh, they won it in 2010 here at Astra. Well, they do look very, very quick. There's a few changes going on a bit further down for that third and fourth place. Well, Mark Cosser even has time for go. Mark Simmons holding that fourth place at the moment. Well, we were looking at all of this on paper before the event. We wondered if Rob Wilson might have done it this afternoon. He's had some very, very quick events here. But Mark Cosser really is. So, race six in your program, it's heat three, it's the first leg ride for our reigning champion, number 37, Mark Cossa and Carl Blythe. They take the win, number 37 then going into first place, in second behind them goes number 49, Gareth Winderburn and Billy Winderburn. In fourth place, number nine, Miles Simmons and Kevin Woodley. And did I give you in third place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Terry Saunders? That's number 24 in third, number nine in fourth. Fifth place is number 15, Matt from Marola and Dan Crawford. In sixth place, number 99, Pete Colvin and Steve Colvin. And the winning time, 132.98, 132.98. So I'm sure that Rob will be looking at that because he had a 134.35. Paul Whiteham at 137.06. Sometimes not relevant at all. It depends who you're racing against. But I'm sure they'll be having a quick look at that. So we now know that we've had wins in the first leg rides for Rob Winterburn and Liam Brown, Paul Whiteham and Kieran Ivey, and Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe. As we turn over the page, you can see the two 2013 champions there, Cameron Woodward and uh, Mark Cosser and Carl Blythe. We turn our attention now back to the solo competition. Oh, 
sure what the delay is on the start. I can see that Andrew Appleton has uh, broken away from the start. And waiting for one rider to join them. After the course, Paul uh, wandering across there. And I think we've now got the riders in line. Watch for the starters to move away. If they're happy, they've got everybody that should be on that start line. Starter moves away. And the things are up, they get underway. We've made the best of the start. Andrew certainly charging out of the middle of that gate. And Andrew Appleton it is that gets into that whole shot going around that first corner. Now, how much can he put pressure on the rest of the field? Four Cooper it is, who's up in the second place. And a battle to get that win first on out. Danny Morris is uh, out there with him again. He's sitting in third place. But Andrew Appleton, very determined move this afternoon. Looking to make it two out of two. Leads as they go around that top ten. Paul Cooper trying everything he possibly can to stay on terms with him. Place at the moment. Uh, this is an excellent start from Andrew Appleton. Arguably not had the best of seasons this year, but he looks he's coming to the afternoon. So, the moment, he's coming to the We're going to be scoring good points in that second place, though. He's going to win first time out, you remember. Last that flag goes to one of our tail enders. Andrew Appleton sees his second checkered flag of the afternoon. Paul Cooper gets second. Danny Warren finishes in third. So, race seven of the afternoon. We move to heat four of the solo competition. Their second leg rides and a win. Second time out for number 22, Andrew Appleton. In third place, number 11, Paul Cooper. In third place, number 52, Danny Warwick. In fourth place, number 82, David Spate. In fifth place, number 14, Rodney McDonald. Sixth place, number 24, Andrew Filmer. And seventh place, number 51. Eighth place finisher there, number 189. The winning time was 115.64. 115.64. So those numbers you should have had for race 7 are 22, 11, 52, 82, 14, 24, 51, 189 and a winning time of 115.64. <laughs> chance to see once again David Howell goes in this one he had a win first time out I don't think he's made the break going into that first turn we're sorted out for as they come round past us as we've got a gaggle of riders in that second third and fourth but here's Martin Turner to take a look at the second third and fourth so what's the second third riders in that front going into that first turn he's got clear of the rest of the riders and dropped into second but it's Martin Sturgeon that's uh, making the best of it and has got the lead so what can David Howell do about it he had a win first time, you remember, he's sitting there in second place, getting closer and closer to the last surgeon. And he's going to attack from, and looks to see where he might be quicker on the circuit. He gets close going up the back straight, they both look the same sort of speed, and it's entrance to the bend, where the rider that's leading has got to make the commitment and take the line. David Howe forcing his way through on the inside, and now he's going to make the and this problem for Martin Sturgeon, he's gone very, very wide. I don't know whether he's lost a chain or something on that corner, but he's done well to hang on to it. It does mean he's opened the door for a second win for David Howell. He takes the second place. So he's been a disappointment for Martin Sturgeon on the far side of the track. Pretty convinced that that was a, a broken chain or something, the way the bike bucked coming out of that turn.
Oh, big disappointment for Martin Sturgeon. A terrific start, and it took David Howe some time to catch up with him. I'm not sure he would have got past him. But as it's turned out, with that mechanical failure for Martin, we've got a first place in race eight for number 21, David Howe. In second place, number 30, Richard Hall. In third place, number 107, Josh Dingle. Fourth place, 96, Georgie Wood. Fifth place, number 42, Glenn Phillips. Sixth place, number nine, Mitch Godden. Seventh place, number 19, Dave Mears. And the winning time, 117.09, 117.09. 21, 30, 107, 96, 42, 9, 19, and a winning time of 117.09. <laughs> So once again we look across that far side, this is heat six and we move on to race nine in the programme. Chance for one of these drivers to get a win. Now you might remember that Harlan Cook goes in this one, he had mechanical problems in his first ride. Is that Harlan that's made the best of getting into that first turn? They come round past me for the first time, Harlan can't go very quite, James Shane comes up and he goes down past that. And it is James Shane that's dropped to the front. Harlan Cook sitting there in second place. Now oh, the youngster James Shane is a terrific ride round that first bend. He let Harlan Cook go wide and then he's taken advantage of that inside. And he looks very quick now. He's got his nose inside. Harlan Cook has a pressure on him again. From Mark Bates, he's sitting there in third place. He looks like he wants second. He goes up the back straight. Those two very, very close in that second and third place. But James Shanes really is starting to turn it on. He's got a terrific style as he comes round off that top turn. Into the last lap. One more chance for him. Had to go for the outside line to get round Harlan Cook. And he's now got himself very quickly into that second place and away from Harlan Cook. It was a good ride from Mark Bates. We see the check of mag being made ready. This is a terrific ride. Second time out for number 93, James Shanes. Second first time out, he's now added a win to it. Race 9 in your programme, let's give you the official result, it's heat 6, it's a win for number 93, his first of the afternoon, James Shanes. In second place, number 3, Mark Baysby. Third place, the early leader, number 7, Harlan Cook. In fourth place, number 6, Rob Pinlow. Fifth place, number 130, Ben Minichap. In sixth place, number 12, seventh place, 122, and eighth place, 53. The winning time was 115.47, 115.47. You should have had 93, 3, 7, 6, 130, 12, 122 and 53. 115.47 the winning time. and Matt from Marola. A replacement for Rob Winterburn, uh, Rob Bradley is number 16, Simon Hill and Jason Farnwell. Well, the turn at the start line, there was Mark Costa that we were missing. He's had to make the outside gate, he's got a long way to go, he gets to the front, 
So it could mean that a rider on the inside is going to get there first. Well, well, response. Tries to cut across to the inside and indeed gets himself to the front. So we wonder if they did have problems getting that machinery started, but it certainly looks to be going now as they go down the back straight. Well, there's changes going on in that third class of fifth place, but a lot of eyes, I'm sure, are on Mark Thompson has now moved through into third. He's got the better of that battle for third, fourth and fifth. Well, this really is a very impressive defence of this British Masters title. riding at the moment, I think that is a very true statement. Well, Robbie Wilson still sitting there in uh, second place, but not able to close that gap. is a very, very impressive ride once again for the reigning champion as we see the chequered flag is second of the afternoon with Mark Cossa and Carl Blythe. So race 10 then, we start the second leg rides for the 1000cc sidecars and a very impressive ride from Mark Costa and Carl Blythe. It's 37 that goes in first place. Second place to them, number 42, Robbie Wilson and Bradley Steer. In third place, number seven, Paul Johnson and Jason Barry. In fourth place, number 15, Matt Promarola and Dan Crawford. Fifth place, number 16, that's our replacement, Simon Hill and Jason Farnwell. And sixth place there, number 57, Clive Stoneman and Roland Broomfield. The winning time was 134.05, 134.05, 37, 42, 7, 15, 16, and 57. 134.05, the winning time, as we now look to race 11. And interestingly, the other two outfits that had wins first time out both go against each other in race 12. So a chance perhaps for Colin Blackbourne or Rob Wilson to get their first win of the afternoon. Right there with him, the two of them go into that first turn together as the rest of the outfits sort themselves out. On the entrance of that first turn, it is Colin Blackburn that's got away, but it's very close for that second spot. Rob Wilson with it at the moment, tries to get close to Colin Blackburn as he goes into that bottom turn. In third at the moment, Peter Lloyd did have that third place, but Tristan Winterburn has moved through. And all eyes, I'm sure, on those front two. Can Colin Blackburn and Martin Smith hang on to it? Rob Wilson getting closer and closer as he comes round that pit bend. He's knows his way around this circuit. And indeed, Rob has gone very wide. Is he hoping to get a very fast line down that back straight? He's got a lot of work to do. I think he lost a lot of ground when he went wide on that top bend. Pulled it in very, very tight. Colin Blackburn. Right now, wide, but he's still got plenty of margin. Of course, Colin Blackburn and 
passenger Martin Smith are no strangers to this competition. They won it in 2007. First time out, they now add to that. So, race 11, a win for outfit number 25. That's Colin Blackburn and Martin Smith. In second place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Terry Saunters. In third place, number 47, Tristan Winderburn and Henry Purcell. In fourth place, number four, Peter Lloyd and Gaz Williams. In fifth place, number 184. Sixth place, number 80. And the winning time, 136.93. 136.93. So you should have had for race 11, heat 5, 25, 24, 47, 4, 184 and 80. 136.93 Well, my apologies. I did um, keep saying that it was Martin Smith that was riding for Colin, but I did give you that change earlier on this afternoon. It is Carl Pugh, the passenger in Colin Blackburn this afternoon. It's, uh, always good to be reminded of these things as we move to race 12. It's heat 6. See in action once again, Rob Winderburn and Paul Wendell, who had wins first time out, you remember. this race develops because if you remember we had a, an early win for Rob Winterburn but I think that's Rob that's back in fourth place at the moment. Already moved now into second place. So the two riders that had wins first time out in second and third at the moment Rob Winterburn goes through and gets in the second spot. Oh, there's quite a gap opened up between him and the early leader Gareth Winterburn. Gareth, of course, had a, a second place first time out. So can Rob Winterburn catch uh, Gareth, who's got that early lead? He's gone very, very wide on the exit of the bend. Billy looks over his shoulder and he knows that it's Rob and Liam that are close to him. And again, they go very wide. You can see that Rob Winterburn's got a much, much tighter line. In very determined mood this afternoon, he's caught Gareth, gets himself in front. That was a terrific bottom and turn. And it will be the check of cards this time for Rob Winterburn and Liam Brown to make it to the Alan to keep the pressure on Mark Uh, let's give you the official result of race 12 that we've just seen and uh, certainly Rob Winterburn and Liam Brown had to work hard for that one but they got there in the end, they got the win it is 2 out of 2 for outfit number 48 in second place, number 49, the early leader Gareth Winterburn and Billy Winterburn in third place, number 92, Paul Whiteland and Kieran Ivey in fourth place, number 99, Pete Colvin and Steve Colvin and fifth place, number 9, Miles Simmons and Kevin Woodley Sixth place there, number 98, Joe Mogg and Jack Cutler. The winning time was 135.92, 135.92. So as that concludes the second leg ride for both solo and sidecar, we confirm that in race 12 you should have 48, 49, 92, 99, 9 and 98, 135.92. So as we turn over the pages, a chance to see all the adverts. If you haven't looked through the programme before, if there is a chance you can use these supporters of our racing sport, then uh, please let them know where you saw the advert. And then a fantastic set of photographs in the centre pages of Masters Action here. That must have been back in 2011. As we eventually get to page 19, 
we move to the solo third leg. It looks as if the starters have got the riders in line for race 13. This is heat 7 of the Masters Solar Event for 2014. And one rider I can see going back to the pit, so I'm not sure quite what's happening there. But we do get underway, and uh, see who it is that breaks into that first turn. Well, the rider that got there first has gone very, very wide. Mitch Gordon comes from on the inside. He's been rushing across to the front, going into that first turn. But Mitch Gordon took the time on the inside of him and got through. So Mitch it is the lead. He had a second first time out, so this will help his points tally no end. But Glenn Phillips has got other ideas. He comes through on the inside of him. Those two together coming off that top turn. Glenn Phillips got the ball down. So Mitch Gordon keeps the ball down and tries to go up the right line around that bottom turn. Uh, disappointment in his first ride to Glenn Phillips with mechanical problems pulling out. But he's made up for it this time. Looks to be getting maximum points. As he comes off that top turn and sees the last lap flag. Mitch Gordon still there in second. Rick Pinmo is the rider in third and there are some big gaps in second, third, third, fourth. I'm sure Glenn Phillips won't mind. He had that battle for it earlier on with Nick to get himself to the front, but he's now hung on to it and he's going to see the second flag take the next four points. Not eight, seven. Mitch Gordon takes second. Rob Pinlow in third. So race 13, we were all trying to decide then who had actually gone back to the pits, but we see from the results that we've got no result for Martin Sturgeon in that one. Right, the win in race 13 was for rider number 42, that's Glenn Phillips, his first win of the afternoon, and in second place, number 9, Mitch Gordon. In third place, number 6, Rob Finlow. In fourth place, number 7, Harlan Cook. In fifth place, number 107, Josh Dingle. In sixth place, number 53, Jody Hodgson and in 7th place number 189 the winning time was 119.49 119.49 you should have had 42, 9, 6, 7, 107, 53 and 189 119.49 as we're quickly underway with race 14 and very quickly into the lead goes number 22 Andrew Appleton he really does look to be in very determined to Game Shane up against him this time, who had a win the second time out, trying everything he can to stay with Andrew as he goes up that back straight. Those two pulling away from the rest of the field a little bit, but Andrew Appleton really setting the pace. Looks 
have a great time with the top back top there. He looks very quick now in this finishing straight. Shane Shane with no answer here at the moment. Just wonder if he's going to be closer coming out of that pit bend. James looks to be very quick round the bends, but Andrew doing just enough at the moment as he sees the last lap flag. Can he make it three out of three? James wants to try and change that if he can, but he's only got one more lap to do it. Russell Rebels is in third place at the moment, but all eyes are sure on those front two because James Shane desperately trying to close the gap. He's got one more corner to go. Andrew Appleton doing everything right at the moment, comes off that top turn, he sees the second flag, he makes it 3 out of 3. James James has to settle the second place, but he's certainly tried everything he could to stay with Andrew. So, race 14 in your programme, it was heat 8 of the Masters solo competition, their third leg rides, and making it 3 out of 3, rider number 22, Andrew Appleton. Second place to him, number 93, the youngster James Shanes. In third place, number 96, Georgie Wood. In fourth place, number 30, Richard Hall. Fifth place, number 12, Daniel Winston. Sixth place, number 24, Adam Filmer. Seventh place, 130. Eighth place, 51. The winning time was 114.51. 114.51. You should have had 22, 93, 96, 30, 12, 24, 130, and 51. 114.51. David Howe and Paul Cooper were sitting in that pit watching Andrew Appleton make it three out of three. Oh, David Howe's the only one that can stay with him at the moment as they move around that first turn and come down past me. Well, certainly Sonny McAdaman up for three, Mark Basie has got to the front early. Paul Cooper is in second. David Howe is back in third place at the moment. So I'm sure that the pit crew of Andrew Appleton will be watching this one because David Howe was the only one that could get on equal parts to Andrew Appleton. He's got a lot of work to do this time. He's got four people in second. And Andrew Appleton is in the corner for Mark Basie. Mark Basie's put it down the first time. So after that terrific start, Mark Basie lays it down on the exit of that bend. The rest of the riders carry on though. The marshals and it's good to see the mark straight up again. So Paul Cooper has got the lead, but look how close David Howe has got to him now as they go into that push then. For the last time, he's got one more stroke and that's not going to do it. David Howe knows that he's going to try and equal Andrew Appleton as he closes right up on Paul Cooper coming out of that top bend. Can Paul Cooper hold on? David Howe goes for the inside and comes to the second bag. He's going to be close. Well, I would have said they crossed the line together. I'll leave that to my line judge, but that was a very, very close finish. A great disappointment for Mark Baseby. on the line but my line judge says no it was a very easy decision to make it means a win in race 15 heat 9 of the Masters solo competition a win for number 21 David Howe second place number 11 Paul Cooper third place number 52 Danny Warwick fourth place number 122 fifth place number 19 sixth place 82 7th place, 14, and a winning time of 117.62, 117.62, 21, 
11, 52, 122, 19, 82 and 14, 117.62 the winning time. Well, it was close, it was very, very close on the finishing line, but David Howe has yet again done just enough. He goes equal on points after three rides, both Andrew Appleton and David Howe on 27 points from three rides. So as we now look at the overall points of the solo competition, we know we've got Andrew Appleton and David Howe out in front on 27 points. Closest to them is Paul Cooper and James Shanes, both on 23. We now turn our attention to the sidecar competition.